In this video, we'll be creating this visual effects shot using the fireball that we simulated in the previous video. We will cover some basic camera tracking, scene recreation, and some pretty cool destruction effects to blur the line between reality and CG. This video is more like an introduction to VFX, so if you already know the basics of Blender, you're absolutely good to go. First of all, you want to open up a new Blender scene like this, then hit this little plus icon and select VFX, motion tracking. All we need to do to get started with the motion tracking is to hit this open button right here and load in our footage. Then hit set scene frames and prefetch. This is a pretty easy scene to track since I'm pretty much stationary throughout the entire shot. So to make a basic camera track all we need to do is just hit detect features right here. Then hit this little pop-up box that we get here and lower the threshold to zero. Now you can see we have all these different points. All we really need to do now is just hit this track markers button and play through the video. Now that we're at the end of the clip, we can hit detect features once more. This time we can track those backwards. All right, so this should be enough to get a pretty good track. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup on these markers because you can see some of them kind of went a little bit crazy here. So we need to find a way to fix that. By far the easiest way to do that is just to go to Solve and then select this Filter Tracks option. Now we can set this track threshold to something like 10 and just hit X to delete. And now Blender should have deleted some of the most problematic trackers. Since I was pretty much stationary when I filmed this shot, we can select this tripod option right here. And then we just want to tell Blender to refine these three options right here. And then we can just hit solve camera motion. And what you want to look for with your tracking is that this solve error gets pretty low. Ideally, you want this to be under one pixel, like we have it right here. If this is way too high, that means your track isn't that good. And you might have to go back and do some more cleanup with the tracks or try some different tracking settings but this time we were lucky and we got a pretty good track right away so to set up the background and the scene all we need to do is go down to the scene setup and hit set as background and set up tracking scene awesome now we can go back to layout mode and if we hit zero on our numpad blender is going to take us to the camera view and as we play this back we notice that we have this pretty nice track going on but of course the ground isn't really aligned with the footage, so we're gonna have to fix that. But before we do that, we just wanna go ahead and go to this camera tab right here. Under background images, we wanna set the opacity to one. So now our background footage is completely visible. So to align the ground of this scene with the ground of the footage, basically all we need to do is just delete this cube and plane right here, select the camera, and now we can rotate it and move it around until we get something that looks visually correct. And you can see when I play it, it looks pretty good. Now we have this tracked shot right here. All right, so let's bring in the explosion that we made in the other video to this scene. Go to File, Append, and then find the Blend file where we made our explosion. Double click that and go to Object, and then import this Fluid object right here. So just hit Append. And right away we can see that we have this explosion that we made last time imported into our scene and if we go to rendered mode and change our render engine to cycles we can see that we still have the material that we made last time all right so let's find a frame where we want the explosion to start i think frame 50 could be good so let's go to the object data properties and set this frame start to 50. So now the smoke will start at frame 50. All right, let's uh, position this where we want the explosion to happen. And perhaps I'm going to scale it up a little bit. You can see here that I made some minor changes to the smoke material. So you can pause and copy it if you want to. To uh, start working on actually blending this into the background footage, let's go to render properties and under film enable transparent right here. So now we can see the background and the explosion right here. So if we remove this light, and jump to a frame with only smoke. We can see that it's very black and it has no lighting at all. And we could try to match the lighting of the scene using a sun lamp, for example, and positioning that. But a way we can get a little bit more realistic results is by using an HDRI. So you can just go to this website called Polyhaven and select one of their HDRIs that kind of matches the lighting conditions in your scene. Then go to shading and right here, select world and then we want to search for the environment texture node and plug that right here now we can hit open and select the hdri that we got from polyhaven 
and right away you can see that we have some pretty nice lighting going on. So yeah, I think that looks awesome. But uh, one thing you'll notice is that the explosion just kind of stands on the ground like this and there isn't really any interaction with the ground. This step is kind of optional, but I'm gonna show you guys a way we can have a little bit of a ground burst. So the road here gets destroyed and we have some pieces flying and everything and that will kind of tie the explosion into the footage. All right, so create a cube, scale it down on the Z axis and move it to where the explosion is happening and hit Ctrl A and apply scale. To create the destruction effect, we want to fracture this object using cell fracture. So give it a particle system and set the source to volume random, then hit object, quick effects, cell fracture. Set the source limit to something pretty big, like 500. Give it a recursion of one, set these two values to zero and set the recursion pattern to random. And this is really important, we want to disable this apply split edge. So make sure that box is not checked, then just hit OK to start the shattering. Right, so once that's done, we can go ahead and remove the original cube, select all of them and just hit Ctrl J to join them into one object for texturing and then we can separate them again to simulate the destruction. All right, so we want to go ahead and give this two materials, one for the top and one for the bottom. So just hit new and add a new slot and hit new again. Let's give this bottom one a black color so we can distinguish between the two. And in edit mode, use face select to select these top faces right here. Then hit control I to inverse the selection and hit assign for the black material. And now you can see we have these two different materials. For the top material, we wanna give it an image texture and plug that into the base color. And then we can open up a screenshot from the footage and then we can hit U, project from view. Now you can see the texture lines up with the footage. For the bottom of material we want to bring in a kind of destroyed concrete material. So let's go to Polyhaven again and this time we want to search for textures. So this material looks pretty good to me. Let's hit download here to download it. Find the blend file of the material and then you'll find the actual material under the material tab. Awesome, let's append that. So we can just use this drop down and select the material that we just imported. Right, so to fix this, this displacement thing going on, we can just remove this displacement from the texture. So just select these two nodes and hit X to delete. And we also wanna go ahead and unwrap those parts. So just hit select here, then hit U and then smart UV project. All right, so to be able to actually simulate the destruction, we're gonna have to separate this object into its pieces again. So in edit mode, just select everything, then hit P and separate by loose parts. Then go to object, set origin, and use this surface option right here. So now the origins are going to be centered. All right, so now we have all of these different textured pieces that we can simulate. So let's give them some rigid body properties. Go to object, rigid body, and hit add active. If we play this animation, they will just start falling with the gravity. But we want the edge of this block to actually stay in one place. So just use the C select tool and select all of these pieces in the middle. Then inverse your selection using control I. Go to the physics properties and alt click this animated box. So now if we play it back, it creates this hole in the ground. Go to a frame where the explosion is taking shape, like frame 55. Then go to the scene properties and under the rigid body world, I'm gonna set the simulation to start at frame 55. And to have the pieces kind of fly up instead of just falling down, we can add in a collision sphere and bring it to the center here. Then we wanna give that one a rigid body and set it to animated. All right, so let's go to frame 58 or something and give this sphere a scale keyframe. So just hit I and select scale, then skip one frame ahead, scale it by zero and insert a new scale keyframe. So now the sphere will only affect the simulation in the beginning frames here and then it will disappear. To stop the pieces from just falling through the ground like this, we're gonna add a plane and bring that so it's just above this block right here. You can see it's barely touching. I'm gonna grab this edge and just hit E to extrude it upwards to make it so that the pieces can bounce towards this wall right here. We can use the knife tool to cut out a hole 
in the plane. Just roughly match the shape of this hole and just delete this part of the plane. Now we're gonna give this collision object a rigid body and set it to passive. And we also wanna make sure to change the collision shape from convex hole to mesh. If we play it back, we should be able to see that our pieces collide with the plane right here. We go to object properties under visibility. You can set this object to be a shadow catcher. And now you can see it's completely transparent, but we still get the shadows from the pieces that land on the floor. If you want to add a little bit more small scale details, an easy way to do that is just to select three pieces like this, duplicate those and move them to the side, and then hit M to move them to a new collection and name that collection debris. Now we can add a sphere and delete this lower part, scale it down a little bit, apply the scale and give that a particle system. Change the frame start and frame end to 55 and move it to the center of this destruction right here. Set the normal velocity to something like 5 and give it a bunch of randomness as well. Go to the render tab and change it to render as collection and select our debris collection that we just made. I just increase the scale a little bit and give it some scale randomness. Then to give it some random rotation, I'm just gonna enable rotation right here. Give it some face and face randomness. Select dynamic and give it some random angular velocity with 20 as the amount. Disable show emitter under the render and viewport display settings. And now we can see that we have some small scale details in the destruction. But one thing that I notice is kind of distracting is how we can see the original footage through this hole right here. So I'm just gonna add in a sphere, delete this upper part, then I'm gonna place it right at this hole. Now if I subdivide this and give it a displacement texture, you can see that we have this crater. Then we can just give this sphere the material that we imported from Polyhaven and you can see that looks pretty good. So right here you could just hit render and that would composite the effect on top of your footage straight away, just inside of Blender. But what I want to do is export the effect as one layer so that I can work on the compositing in another compositing software. So to disable the background from rendering, we can go to compositing and just delete all of this and just plug these render layers into the composite, decrease the samples to have it render a bit faster, and then we can just hit render animation. Okay, so once that's been rendered out, I imported it into my compositing software and just placed it over the footage. Then I did some color correction and applied some lighting effects as well as some grading to bring it all together. Then to kind of spice it up, I added in this tracer right here so it looks like it's hitting the ground, as well as some sparks. And I also added in this little blur from the tracer, kind of lingers in the air or something. I don't know, I think it looked cool. Then to create the shockwave effect, I made this separate composite shot where I just have this expanding white sphere that can attract to the fireball. And then inside of my main composite, I can use that to drive the displacement. And you see that we get this pretty awesome kind of shockwave or heat wave ripple effect. Then I just added a little bit of camera shake and some sound effects from Upbeat. And this is how the final effect turned out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss the next one.